crash course in pneumatics from a non-expert. Um, everything push fits together with these little connectors. You push the blue ring in, they come apart. That's the changeover shuttle valve. Um, that's an example of a, of a needle valve. So you can increase the oxygen bleed, for example, into the reservoir limb with something like that. Uh, I've actually found, oh hang on, uh, to get rid of that. These are all the sort of bits, bits and bobs. There's a, there's a flow restrictor. Uh, that actually goes green in the presence of a pressure. So you can use it as a disconnect alarm. Uh, at least it changes colour. It goes from green to red. Industrial pressure gauges, you see that one goes to, uh, what? Uh, I assume it's one bar, but it's, it's, it's too much for um, a medical system. That's an on-off switch in line. Uh, that's a pressure reducing valve. None of these are rated for oxygen, but I have to admit I did use them with oxygen and I'm still here. Um, but I really can't recommend that because uh, uh, if there's any oil inside it can explode, catch fire, and then the aluminium explodes catches fire and there's much nastiness this is the pandemic ventilator it has a curved panels here the oxygen cylinder would fit along here it was the sort with the rotating flow selector on the side and the connector the Schrader connector would go through there uh, you can see it's designed to be completely kind of idiot proof you switch it on uh, some of the things are quite bulky see how bulky that is you switch it on and uh, as you saw in my diagram in the paper it uh, entrains air enriched with oxygen if you press this button it gives you one minute of oxygen high oxygen it basically blasts extra oxygen into that reservoir limb the reservoir uh, sorry there's the end of the reservoir the reservoir is actually I gave it a transparent base, which is thoughtful of me. The reservoir is a coiled tube, actually made of plumbing tube. I'd forgotten that. Um, there's a large cylinder, piston if you like, driven by a small one in the middle there. Uh, we have inspiratory and expiratory flows, which set the inspiratory, expiratory time. This is very early piece of 3D printing, which someone did for me as a favour. No doubt it was massively expensive. And in there is all this sort of pneumatic logic and everything crammed in. These things are magnetic well, yeah, magnetic valves. So when the piston moves to there, this trips. And the, the logic gate flicks across, changes state. I actually can't see where it is. So it's under here. And the gas pathways change and the piston moves back the other way. None of this was rated for oxygen. They're industrial parts. I ran them on oxygen anyway because I was young and foolish. And uh, as I said, it, 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 it worked. Um, I don't think it's powerful enough for ARDS. In ARDS, you know, you want the, you want to, you have no control of the inspiratory waveform with this machine. You may want it to come up and have a plateau. Uh, and then drop for an ARDS patient. You can change the IE ratio by altering the times, which is good, I suppose. Um, on the upside, it, the idea is it was idiot-proof. Two knobs here and an on-off switch and a boost. Um, you can't get much simpler than that. Um, you know, I, 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 I'm tempted to think maybe I should have I should make this electronic, you know, electrically powered, and then you can actually have some performance data readouts using cheap electronics this is very expensive this cylinder um, you know the seals can leak especially at low flow rates these are industrial parts they're meant to sort of go with very high pressures inside and i suspect that helps splay the seals out so um, running things very slowly is i'm not sure it's what they're optimally designed to